Hey, Josh. Howdy. Uh, How's it going? Oh, Tuesdays are hell. I always have solid meetings starting at, at seven and I'm waiting for, desperately hoping one of them will end early enough that I can grab a bite to eat. Ah. So the- um, Well, we okay. don't have, we don't have much on our agenda. So this might be your opportunity. Well, uh, the, the previous one actually ended 15 minutes early. So I wolfed down a bagel. Oh, okay, good. Um, the, um, <clears throat> and, and, you know, got headbutted by my cat who could smell fish. <laughs> and I pointed out that he doesn't like smoked salmon, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. No, no. The, um, so. <sighs> yeah, but mostly for me, it's been, you know, spring conference hell with uh, everything for Red Hat Summit and um, KubeCon do it once. Yep. The, um, uh, so, okay, well, we only got really a couple of things. Yeah. Um, so let's see if anybody joins us. Um, give a couple of minutes. Okay. The um, so, oh, let me see the link to the subprojects template poll. Where is that? There we are. Yeah, I took a look at that right before the meeting. That looked that looked good. Yeah, we finally got all the feedback in. Oh my god! You know. I don't know why I don't usually, I guess mostly on pull requests, mostly people choose one commenting method or the other. Um, so it's, you know, it's just, I really had to hunt down comments hmm. all over the GitHub UI to include all of them. The, um, yeah, I tried because to some of them idea. showed up in the, some of them showed up in the file comments and some of them showed up in the conversation. Yeah, I tried to do mine as a review so they'd show up in the final comments because I think uh, I find them easier to absorb there. Yeah. Hello again, Amy. I was still last few hours on meetings with Amy. Yes, it happens <laughs> yes. on occasion. Um, no, part of it, like, I wandered like through here to be able to see if there's like suggestions that I can have for like project charters and things. Um, and it looks like you've already gone through and like attempted to find the CNCF charters that like don't exist out here. Um, yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Are you looking and at the given that, that, I've, that I've got? Given that, shall we get started officially? Yeah. Okay, so welcome to the governance working group meeting for the CNCF. One to the CNCF COC. This is being recorded. Um, and all of that jazz. And we are going to start out by reviewing the draft. Ooh, if I can get my mouse back. We're going to start out by reviewing the draft um, charter document uh, uh, for recommendations for projects to add a charter component to their governance documentation, um, which was proposed by Dawn last meeting. Um, and now she has a draft. So you want to take that away, Dawn? Absolutely. So I did get some good feedback from DIMS, which I think I've incorporated most of that. Um, the, so the direction I decided to go with this was looking, looking around. So none of the graduated projects have a quote charter document, um, but what they do have is they have those components. And so what, um, what I tried to do was um, steer people towards including certain things in their documentation. So with the idea that having um, you know, having some of this like a scope and a mission helps avoid issues and misunderstanding later if people don't actually understand what you do. Um, and there's also lots of complexity overlapping technologies, that sort of thing. So, so this helps people fit their project into the overall ecosystem and what functionality it has and it doesn't have. What are they trying to do and not do? Um, so I talked about a little bit about how 
it's often not called a charter, but what we really want is people to have like a mission statement, values or principles, similar things found within either their governance documents or the readmes. So the specific recommendation was to include a mission statement in the readme file, um, and then include like a statement of values or principles within the governance document, um, wherever they have their governance documentation. And um, with our point that it should be consistent with the mission and values of the CNCF charter, which we should all read. Um, and then Jim's also made a good point that these, these really are living documents that should change over time as projects evolve. So what you need when you're at Sandbox is probably just a, a statement or two. But what you need when you, um, you know, by the time you graduate is probably something a bit more detailed. And then I gave a few examples, links to examples. So that's that's pretty much pretty much it. Am I missing anything? Well, two questions. Am I missing anything big? And does this seem like the right approach given what the other projects have? No, I think this is the right approach. Um, the only group that I would really highlight as having um, like major charters here are the SIGs because they need those in order to be able to form. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would use the same words here. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with being able to call it a project charter because like, as we've seen, it's not called a charter at all and it doesn't follow the same kind of thing and, and being able to set the expectation that it will have the same level of robustness as the big charters like the cncf charter and the sig charters is probably not something that a tiny little baby project is going to be able to like meet those goals yeah do we have um yeah, no, that's a good point. I think maybe I should add something about um, about SIG and SIG charters. Uh, let me figure out where. I'm not sure where like this this comment would be, but like, yeah, Project Readme seems like the most appropriate place to be able to like kind of like have this as a starting point. As. Oh, rather than in the governance document. So I, what I what I said was that the mission should be in the in the README because I think that's important for people to see front and center, and that the um, either some kind of statement about values and principles should be in the in the governance documentation. Um. Hold on, I'm trying to catch up with notes. Yep. Um, the um, and uh, there's one thing that you don't actually mention in there that I think is actually critical for projects to have mm -hmm. um, scope. Okay. As in, um, which is kind of a more technical, you know, a more technical corollary to the mission. Um, as in, like you know, this project, you know, covers, you know, the, you know, uh, um, container X WASM runtime um, and its dependencies and drivers, um, you know, but not container building tools. Yeah, I ran across a really good example of the scope document. Um, well, maybe that was the Kubernetes one. I think I, yeah, I saw so I guess, another one too. Yeah. Yeah, this, is, this isn't the one I'm thinking of. There was another one that was really good that I will dig up that was a, a very much a technical scope. It was this project does these things and not these things. And it was, it was quite well, well written. Um, I'll, I'll dig up an example. This is good. It's good feedback. Yeah, so my other question is, should we be recommending that people put the scope in the readme or in the governance documentation? I mean, I think as long as you have it, it's fine. Everybody can make their own decisions about where this should live as far as like, like a spec project is gonna be different from like a, um, 
a distro project, that kind of thing. Well, yeah, but we're going to be adding stuff to templates. Yeah, oh, okay. we're going to make so there's a the question of which temp which template okay. do we add it to? This is really a conversation about like the it should live somewhere. Where do we want it to make the recommendation live? Okay, I yeah. retract my comments. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. The, Realistically, um, they could they can put it anywhere and they can ignore it in the yeah. template. There, there's quite a bit of leeway on these okay, that's fine. things. Um, yeah, um, I tend to think scope is probably more in the governance documentation. Yep. Would you agree with that? I'm I'm fine with that. I can see it being in either place. So yeah, um, the. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of traded because like for some of the stuff, like I've just been working on conveyors governance document again. And for conveyor, they really need scope to be part of the governance documentation because that's where the procedures on accepting mm -hmm. new sub projects are. And that's when you really need to know scope. Yeah. Um, the uh, But for other projects I who don't have that sort of consideration, if they're putting the mission in the readme, scope is kind of a corollary to the mission. It's the technical details of the mission. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see them also putting it there. So, container D has a pretty good example of a scope document. Yeah. Is that that link there? I think I saw another one too. I'm trying to remember where which project it was. So this is good. So what I'll do is I'll I'll take all of this and update it, and then probably um, do we want to review it one more time in this meeting, or should I just make the changes and PR it? You have a preference. I could go either way. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to actually spell out the sort of three different sections that we've identified. Mm -hmm. So mission, um, uh, scope, and values and principles. Okay. To to explain what those are, because right, this is the advisory document, right? Yep. Um, and it's going to accompany the changes that we make to the templates, and so explanations are in order. Um. So to say, hey, this is what a mission is, this is what scope is, this is what values and principles are. Um, the, um... Okay, I'll do that. And then I'll, I'll bring it back to this meeting or get some feedback async on this doc before I PR it, because I think those are big enough changes that- Yeah. I don't wanna, I don't wanna necessarily do all the iterations on on GitHub because that's harder. Uh, mm -hmm. A nice timing note: the next SIG update meeting is uh, April sixth, so that can give you both a deadline as well as like a time to be able to put this out in public. Too too soon? Too too short? Too fast? I turned fifty on April sixth. So oh, so no, then okay, fine. Really? No, you don't have to be there directly. The Someone else. No. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I can. Wow, everybody's <laughs> younger than me. The um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, it's really a timing the, note. That's all. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, but I do not turn uh, fifty on April six. So um, the um, so so yeah, I can probably be at the meeting, and that that actually would be good. Um, the, it's just um, a note of something to highlight. The TOC is likely yeah. going to be interested in this, and someone may even have comments in good ways. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, the um, yeah, so um, we have time to to work on this more in the next 
week plus. Yeah, I should. Be and for to. me, I I suddenly become slightly more available once the deadline for turning in conference materials has passed this Thursday. The um. So. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'll be I'll be out the week of March 29th through my birthday. Um, yeah. So I'll be out that week before because that's Easter holiday. So we get Friday and Monday off anyways. So taking advantage of that to take a, a full week off more than a week. Yeah, I guess that would be the one question is how well attended that meeting is going to be, but we never know. The um, I can't predict. Just letting mm -hmm. you know that there is a meeting and perhaps if you wanted to have a yeah. deadline and if you wanted to be done like, and move on to other things, this would be a way well, to- No, it gives, us some, it gives us right something to discuss at the meeting, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that seems good. And then the tricky part is gonna be, we'll have to hammer this out and the tricky part is going to be coming up with template examples because a generic template for a mission statement. Yeah. The- um, I'm actually thinking scope should go in the readme file because scope is as much has much to do with contributions as it does with other things. So I think I think scope needing to be in the governance file for things like an umbrella project is a little bit more of a special case. Okay. That seems seems reasonable to me. Like you said, it's one of those things like you could make an argument for it either way. Yeah. Also, that means in our template things, we'll only be creating the scope template once instead of three times. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but you're right. I think that burying it in the governance documents, a lot of people don't read the governance documents unless they're interested in particular governance issues, where the scope is something that you actually really want everyone to read. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is good. Thanks. Okay, so. Okay. Well, thank you for drafting that. Yeah, I finally the, finally got time after saying I was going to do it for I don't know how many months. Yeah, a lot. The um, oh well, <laughs> how long have I had the the initial bullet point version of the definition of open governance sitting <laughs> in a hack MD document? The, <laughs> yeah, um, true. So the okay. Um, and speaking of long term things, I have finally gotten all comments incorporated into the sub projects template. Um, so if possible, I would like to go ahead and vote to merge that. Um, <clears throat> it has been reviewed by Saad. Yeah. Um, uh, not by our new TOC liaison, but I think given that it's a template, it's probably okay to have it reviewed by one of them. Um, we should, and, and we also have not synced up with. Um, our new liaison, which is, I keep wanting to say Alyssa, but I don't think that's the right name. Uh, Alina or Alana, Elena. Alina. Hmm. First uh, thing I'll have to ask her is how she pronounces her name. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I did this, I want to say last week with updating with like the uh, the new TOC liaison. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. The um, okay, so okay, um, yep, I don't think there's any further any further discussion on the sub projects template. No, I think it, I think it looks good. That was a, a lot of feedback okay, cool. to, to incorporate. I think we finally yeah. got it, and yeah. Good. I mean, honestly, probably the other two templates need that level of review, mm -hmm. um, which they didn't necessarily get originally. So if, if anybody is feeling um, uh, 
Well, and you should expect that the subprojects template to end up in the tough project very soon because um, that's what that's what Joshua works on, and he and I were talking about um, governance for for tough um, update yeah. framework and uh, okay. And I was like, I know, I know exactly what you should look at. I was like, it's a draft. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So that's how you got. That yeah. Draft well, there. it's going to be officially added to the conveyor project, which is has not yet applied to the CNCF mm -hmm. um, this week. Yeah. So stuff being a specification, they have basically yeah. you know, limitations of the specification in various languages, reference implementations. Yeah. So it fit nicely into the subproject model. Cool. Always, always lovely to have a road test of these things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, um, so, yeah, and, and I'm just saying the other two, um, the other two did not quite get the same level of scrutiny, mm -hmm. which probably means that they could use it um, at some point down the line. Okay. The um, so, um, I mean, the other two are in some ways less complicated or have more field examples. Right, because yeah. like steering yeah. committee elections, we have lots and lots of examples of um, the um, and and you know maintainer council is not that complicated of a model. Plus, honestly, nobody is going to use that template as written, based on looking at ten different maintainer council projects. The um, so. Okay, um, do we have any other? Open issues. Oh, the other thing I did is I went through the was it the issues or the PRs and I tagged them with the governance working group. Because we've talked about how we didn't have any of them properly tagged. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I see so, that the only one that's governance is the general website one. Yeah. The um, do we have stuff that Carolyn is waiting for us on the website? I was wondering what the status of the website is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, she she was actually waiting for my review, and I've completed it last week. A wild so, okay. appears. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Hi there. Uh, time, time zone, okay. Time zones. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, like the day, daylight savings time zones. Yeah, I expected that this hour, they, this meeting will start in a few, in half an hour. So, uh, Kelleran was waiting for my review on the website. Uh, I completed it last week. And um, let's check if anything else is there. But as far as I remember, she, uh, she had to address a few minor uh, issues there, and that's it. Good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this, getting this out there. Because I'm, I'm constantly pointing people to various resources that we have, the mm -hmm. docs that we've written, and I feel sort of guilty just like dropping them a link to GitHub repo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, just a minor, just a minor stuff here, and once it's done, so we are good on the website. Cool. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And then we can actually get our flow of materials going. The, um, so, okay. The, um, but it doesn't sound like there's specific stuff for governance to do until that's live. Wait. Although I can double check with Carolyn. But it doesn't sound like there's anything to do until that's live. So, okay. Um, well, I think that's it, short and sweet. Unless you actually want to do the revisions to the um, mission stuff live. Um, no, I'll do that offline because I actually, given that we want to put more details about the mission scope and principles values, I kind of want to reorganize it a little and break 
break those down into separate sections yeah. to make it easier for people yep. to find. So that's reorganizing a document is not particularly productive in a collaborative environment. So no. I'll, I'll do that offline. Okay. But I should I should legitimately have some time in the next couple of days to do that. So it should be, should be fine. Okay. And yeah, once you're done with your part of that, then ping me and I will start adding stuff. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Oh, and this is actually part of contributor growth effectively, but in there, which is that uh, work continues on the template contributor ladder. Um, Karen's done a lot of reorganization. I need to go through and edit. Um, I have not had a lot of time to devote to it. Um, the um, so that's in progress. Cool. Okay. Okay. See, see folks on Slack, email, whatever. Sounds good. All Thank right. You. Good to see you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.